In a studio that's in a basement comes the epic story of how two friends changed the future of the movie podcast game forever. The reviews are in. Boys Life Magazine gives the High Psy Podcast four and a half acorns. The Daily Bugle says, these guys are super legit. And Pope Francis declares the podcast as life affirming. From the kid who tried to get smart with David Spade and got fucking old. You're still out. You're still back. And the guy who can name all four Baldwin brothers. Alec, William, Daniel, and the baby boy, Stephen. Live from the studio of his parents' basement. The Have You Seen It Podcast. Welcome, welcome back. Well, howdy. Howdy. <laughs> How goes it? it? It goes well. It goes it real goes well. It goes well. Yes. It does. I think it does. Yeah, I so think, I. Uh, I think with what we're about to talk about, I'm... Uh, oh, dude, I'm I can't wait. Mood. I can't wait to get your <laughs> two cents on this film. I watched this and I was like, "This is right up Cash Prowse's oh, alley." Oh yeah, man, I, this is uh, something I gotta go back and rewatch because there's so many little details that uh, I was trying to pick up on, but I just couldn't. There's so much going on. There, you gotta there go is for a lot rewatch. going on in this film. What's the film we are, t- are talking about? We are talking about the Brad Pitt film named Ad Astra. The new sci-fi film just yes. came out. It just did. came out last this Friday. Weekend. Hot off the presses. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it was, we, we had a double feature this week, Cash. We did have a double feature. Yeah, we didn't do any movie news or anything. Nope. But we instead went and saw two movies. Two very week. different movies. Very different. <laughs> entirely different films. Like, you could uh, not... I've picked two... Two broad... Yeah, yeah. opposite movies, yeah. Yeah. Our first film that we saw was... Uh, Rambo Last Rambo Blood. Rambo Last Blood. Yes. And then we went into see... check out that review. <laughs> Rambo Last Blood, we're going in. You don't need to think at all in Rambo Last Blood. Zero. And then you go into this film, and it's just very heavy, philosophical. Super heavy. <laughs> very he- I mean, so many different things that you can pull from. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, but yeah, I'm excited about it. I was super excited for this film because, you know, it's not too often we get a hard sci-fi. You know, no, we get we sci-fi. Get we get years. Star Wars and whatnot. And we get Guardians of the Galaxy, but that's mm-hmm. that's loose. Yeah. Loose, loose on the science uh, yeah, par- yeah, yeah. portion of sci-fi. This seemed very, and and you know we can talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson to see how many. Things oh, he'll bitch up about on. He'll bitch about anything. So R- I'm yeah. sure he will have a fit about this movie. However, I really love this because I can really see the future of mankind someday. Exactly, and know? it it took a very realistic approach to me of what the future is going to look like. It's In- not going to be incredibly. It's not going to be that much different. No. Things are going to be a lot easier, mm-hmm. but I mean, things right now, and that's the kind of thing is like how, because I mean, you see, it's not even that big of a difference from like 50 years ago from what it is now. I mean, yeah. usually in the future, you think everyone's going to be wearing these gray space suits or whatnot, and we'd all be one sex and whatnot, and we all living, but it's, yeah, to me, this took a very realistic where it was just, it was, everything was much easier, but they were using the same basic technology that we're using right now. The spaceships were mm-hmm. all using proportion or propulsion uh, and the, yeah exactly to me it seemed pretty dense with science it yeah. seemed as far, and we're not scientists but it seemed pretty correct as far as it goes for me and i like even though it was kind of like it felt like in the future but it wasn't too over the top like we still had rovers in this movie like you know uh, uh, exactly yeah. ro- moon rovers yeah. and still have shuttles shuttles yeah. like all these things and it still kept the uh, the same building structure is like normal exactly it wasn't these stuff. fake um it wasn't like star wars comic you know, you, comic-y yeah. like uh spaceship Space crafts so you can come and land anywhere or anything mm-hmm. they hover and whatnot i liked even uh we'll jump in it we'll, but uh i liked even because remember he goes he takes uh, a shuttle a commercial shuttle to the moon mm-hmm. and even that didn't look like it was like a regular shuttle you yeah. know even though with that it's because it never tells us what year this is no it, doesn't. it says the near future yes. that's all it says but there's but yeah he takes commercial flight to the moon and they're in like it's a shuttle that's what it would be like if we were going to the moon right now i mean it yep. would be a shuttle it wouldn't be like a spaceship or a ufo or anything and i always i love the visuals i love the way that they colonize the moon you know like with the building structures and stuff well it this very... movie was fucking 
beautiful. It was. It was so the, beautiful. I man. love just the vastness the space. of space. Yeah. Just And you got that feeling, just the coldness and the distance and mm-hmm. everything. And it, I fuck. It looked. It almost looked like a, a, a Denny Vil, Villeneuve film for a little bit. You know, when you're that slow, slow panning of the ship just drifting mm-hmm. through space and there being no sound or anything, just Not, dead silence. And that's how it is in space. There are, yeah, yeah. There there's no, no air. So yeah, there's, there's no, no air. Sound. So there's no sound. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I I love I love shots like that, man. Mm-hmm. And the, like you said, it, it being uh, built in reality, it, like they had the international space antenna. Remember that thing? That was giant. God damn, man, antenna that, that goes up. from Earth to the fucking yeah. space. That's yeah. crazy. It, and that's stuff I love because that's mm-hmm. realistic. That could be a future super, we live in. Super realistic. That's and what I love. Yeah. I thought one thing that was super unrealistic, and I was really irritated at first. I was like, come on, really? When all the when the when the thing exploded and all the bodies were falling off, I was like, "How do you not have a safety measure intact?" But then, Brad Pitt fell off, and this is early on in the movie, yeah. so I'm not spoiling anything. But then I realized, oh, all those people falling all had safety parachutes. Yeah, and you also don't ex- yeah. never expect that thing to blow up. Well, right, but I mean, you would have safety things. <laughs> yeah, but but they in were all life, but they were but all they actually but they were happen. also all hooked up to the antenna. Uh-huh. I mean, so I mean, that's pretty. That's as safe as anyone climbing antenna these days has. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're all geared up yeah. in parachutes. I just even. felt like everyone was super chill about everyone falling off. Though I was like, man. Well, and they were in space though, mm-hmm. also. Yeah, they were in a, a certain atmosphere. They were, so they weren't so. Uh, so again, I mean, the I don't know. Atmosphere, right? Well, there's like know, eight different a, atmospheres. Yeah, sure. yeah. I, <laughs> I have no idea what atmosphere they're in. There's there's multiple layers. So, uh, but yeah, exactly. So, uh, but yeah, I felt like they were taking. But again, they never thought that they were gonna have some fucking uh, alien surge. Surge. Yeah, because the surge happens quite a few times. Yeah. Well. Should we just get into it? Well, yeah, what, what was your initial? What was your initial thoughts about it? I mean, uh, Brad Pitt fucking killed it. He killed Incredible. it, man. Incredible. I, from the very start, far I felt that tension that he was mm-hmm. felt. He was so wound up at, at the very. Be- I mean, throughout the entire film, he's yeah. wound up because we find out that he's kind of a psychopath. And I like that in a lot of ways because like his his pulse never went up. And ever. I liked to me, I like that because to me, astronauts are always kind of crazy. I mean, especially, did you, you ever see... You be a special breed. Did you ever see First Man? The one with uh, Ryan, Re- or not Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, where he plays Neil. I have Neil. not yet. You, you watch that movie, and you just think this guy is a psychopath. Did you he, like that movie or no? It was great. It was? It has one of the best space scenes, the most realistic moon like scenes I've ever seen in a movie. Well, maybe your next streaming pick of the week, you <laughs> might want to pick that, because I haven't seen that it was yet. That'd be a great. fun one. It was yeah. great, man. It's really a... It's, it's he's it's Ryan it's Jake not Jake Chilton but it's uh Gosling Ryan Gosling yeah. but uh but it's really a story about like his wife and everything like like in this movie he had to give up his wife and everything and fucking Neil Armstrong he pretty much had to say see ya because everyone expected he was gonna die everyone expected he was gonna that's die. true the yeah. president Nick or it was Nixon Nixon had a prepared speech of for all for when he died. Oh yeah, that's very that's famous. Nixon had a prepared speech. No one expected them to come back. They were taping up that fucking shuttle on their way up to yeah. You have to watch it, man. It's tense. It's wow. scary. The whole thing is like because it shows them from the perspective and the shuttle is like because so many people did die. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a crew. There's multiple crews that died before they went up there. And in Russia too, a lot of people died in Russia. Oh, Russia trying to sending people. Oh, up. they were sending up every week. <laughs> Like who's next? Yeah, the guy, the guy who first went into space, which they beat us in space. Russia mm-hmm. did for you not to. He knew he was gonna die. Uh, he going up there. He he knew. I don't think they had any plan of bringing him back down. The first Russian astronaut. Yeah, that's so insane to take on that responsibility Ex- to know you're gonna go up. And there that's what die. I loved about that. We're like, you have to be kind of insane you because do? you have to be willing to say, "I'm willing to die for." I mean, it's the advancement of science and everything, but it's you're not getting anything out of it. No, monetarily, you're not getting anything from no, it. I guess it would just to be written in the history books forever. Exactly, because it is a very big deal in mankind and, and human for that, history. Oh, exactly. And yeah. but it takes a special kind of person, a very kind of interesting, odd, odd person that's well, willing to give up everything. To, to give up their life just to be known in the sacred science, you mm-hmm. know? And to have a family. Neil Armstrong had kids. He had family. that He was willing to give up. Ah, oh, that's crazy. You can argue that he was kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, you know. But yeah, I, but yeah. people have that. Yeah. Ar- of course, right. I understand. It's for science. But it is. 
as a kid, as a kid, you're probably thinking your dad. Well, is. if that's your dad and he's like he, he and that's exactly that. what that's what brings us back to Ad Astra is we learned that Brad Pitt he's an astronaut, but he's yes. following in his dad's footsteps because his dad was a very famous, which is played by Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, I thought he had a great performance in this too. Oh, I really loved Tom- it. Oh, when I you get Tom, I'm like, well, I thought he did no, a really he kills good job. it. When you get Tommy Lee Jones in anything, he seems so angry all the time. Yes. I think it's scary to even ask him to be in a movie. <laughs> but I thought it was a very good choice that he made in this film. It was so like it was the mission first always. Yeah. And that was the thing in my head of like, why are you sending up this highly religious older man? He was older when he they sent him up. Yes. He was already in his sixties. Like yeah. why are you sending like this this red flag? But one also, hyper but also, religious. Right, but also I understand it too, because if you're gonna send one someone Yeah, you, to Neptune, you almost don't want to send a young you, person. Right. You want to send someone who's willing to die out there. But to be to fair, to they were they intended to come back. Eventually, yes. Yeah. So I mean, so Eventually. all uh, I'm sure he was the oldest one by far because yeah. he was mission lead. So I'm sure they because they sent up quite a few people. Did you sim- sim- uh Did you sympathize with Tommy Lee Jones' character at all? Absolutely. I thought they, yes. Absolutely. Because I thought they did a really good job in the writing. We're not going to jump into it now. Yeah. That's why I'm being vague. But I, I really, I really saw his point of view in this movie, and that's what I don't love. Like even with the quote unquote bad guy or the. Or the 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 um, antagonist kind of thing. Uh-huh. I thought it was very good because I was like, man, I see what he's talking about. I see why he did what he did. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? Well, definitely, I could see it for sure. But yeah, we'll get into it because I definitely have some theories on with because Tommy Lee's at the at the end. He's he's an asshole. Yes, for sure, entirely. But I asshole. believe that he was doing that. I believe him being up there so long, he had to convince himself mm-hmm. that there was nothing left for him. So in his mind, he he thought that he really didn't want anyone up there. But we'll get into that. Yeah. So Brad Pitt, he's super chill. He's he's, I, I say chill like literally, like he's always super level headed. Yes. He's never had his BP go up over eighty. Crazy. And he's an astronaut. And he's an astronaut, and it has been in very tense. You think scenes. first. Going first time going to space, your heart's going through the fucking. But we find out kind of the reasoning for that is uh, his dad left when he was sixteen because the, the uh, Earth isn't looking too good. No, not at this point. I mean, it's... Earth is not looking too good right now. I can only imagine a hundred years how it's what it's going to look like. But uh, so they right at the start, and this is the kind of thing that it really threw me kind of for a loop where this movie went because right at the start they're teasing aliens. Right, right away. at the start, mm-hmm. they're saying there's this mission. What was the mission called that uh, Tommy Lee went up for? I started with an L, Lima, Lima Project. The Lima Project, the super Lima Project. secret. But they were going up to look for. They were going to the edge of our solar system where we won't have any radio. Where Neptune is, right? Yeah, and where the where the sun isn't pulling radio frequencies. I guess so mm-hmm. you have to get out of the range of the sun for it to go anywhere. And they're gonna go past Neptune. That's the edge of our solar system, and. Uh, Try to contact fucking anyone. I guess to help. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, it's, in SOS in I the suppose? movie, it's based off a thing like it's a last hope. Mm-hmm. Like like we're giving up on Earth, so now we have to go find someone else. Yeah. And uh, and when Brad Pitt's because Brad Pitt, his job, he's an astronaut, but he works on the international space antenna, mm-hmm. which is a huge fucking antenna, giant antenna. I mean, the that biggest, thing is very high, <laughs> very high up in the air, bigger than any mountain or anything. It, I mean, that must take in. Decades 50 to years to make yeah. it. So. But, uh, but it's super cool, man. It's super cool I do it because it looks super fucking real. It looks super awesome. But uh, And everything in this movie looked great. And it's so vast from it, from the tower going from Earth into space. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so – but when he's up there working on it, they get a big surge, a power outage, but it knocks the power out of the entire world. Yeah. And uh, it blows up the entire tower. Unfortunately, you've been working decades on that thing and you oh, built man. that – I mean, you got to think about those guys who who spent decades. They were probably in tears, man. Oh, yeah. In tears when that thing collapsed. Yeah. Hey, well, we got to build another one of those bitches. <laughs> <laughs> not in my lifetime, they're not. But uh, so the tower blows up, and Brad Pitt only survives because he's was probably the only one not panicking as he was falling. Because, because I mean, you're falling from that distance, you're going to get knocked out because of the G-forces. Yep. But he was able to because... It, I guess maybe this is where the science maybe wavers a little because I'm not sure if you can prevent yourself from being knocked out because of G-forces. You Oh, no, you can, though. That's what pilots are trained to do. Yeah, I, I guess so after a yeah, while. Yeah, after fighters. a while, but yeah. yeah. But they, I mean, they, they, like, but they're not trained. Their I'm not something. sure if they're trained for that. With the specific Intens- falling. Yeah. But that intensity, too, because he's falling from thousands of feet in the right. momentum. And he's going of course, there's maximum different... velocity and whatnot. Yeah. But, 
but yeah, but he he just doesn't get knocked out. He's one of the few, so he's able to uh, pull his shoot. Do you now? Do you think you could ever come out of or back into consciousness? Yes. If yeah. You pass out. Oh yeah. Before you, you hit the ground. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of some of a lot of the time, survive. like if you'll see, like when a reporter goes up in like a jet. Yeah. And like they're flying, they'll they'll pass out, and then they'll, and they'll come up. right up to, and yeah. if just a couple seconds it doesn't take very long, but uh, but again, I don't know if they're going the same force that Brad Pitt was falling from eighty thousand feet in. Oh it. yeah, I mean flames <laughs> were coming off, you know, like where the he turned into almost essentially a fireball falling down. But you immediately get the the instance that this guy is a, a psychopath, mm-hmm. right? And uh, yeah. but any any has a a. He keeps everyone at a distance, even yep. when he's like landing, like even the people coming to help him, he's even like hesitant. Yep. And he even says at one point, just don't touch me. Like he's super, but because in his mind, he thinks that that's what he needs to do because that's what his dad did. Yep. And he's Because at one point they asked him like, should we contact any family or whatever? And he's like, you know, in this business, you can't, no family. But yep. he was married to Liv Tyler. He was. Good work, my guy. <laughs> but giving that up. <laughs> It takes a special kind of man. That's something that Brad Pitt's oh so familiar with. <laughs> giving <laughs> up these the beautiful, beautiful women. Yeah, I guess when you're Brad Pitt, you can do that. Of course, because when when there's beautiful women lining up. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, and uh, there are a dime a dozen with Brad. And Liv Tyler doesn't have a big role in this. No, she doesn't. No, it was a lot of video too. It was it was like a, yeah, a lot exactly. of video screens. She I don't, I don't even think... think she has a line in it. Does she ever speak? Well, I mean, she speaks like the the videos. The yeah, chats, yeah, but yeah. not like physical form. I don't think. I think she, at the very end she comes she in and comes says in. like yeah. hi or something. But the very yeah, it. we don't get a lot, but we we get that. Uh, he, that's he, that's his only family, but he cut that off because mm-hmm. he because space was too important to him. Yeah. And I love the the development of Brad Pitt's character, McBride. Oh, yeah, because like you really got a sense of who he was, even with his psych evaluations too, with the little. Uh, uh, robot man, and he puts the thing on his neck to check his pulse. And I like that. I like the I continuing of the that the psych evaluation because that's kind of your way of following along his exactly. descent into uh, quote unquote madness. Because, I suppose because he was such a good because uh, he was so good at keeping everything calm that he was able to lie through those. Even mm-hmm. though you could tell from the very start, this guy is not okay. No, no, <laughs> This not guy at needs all. a long therapy sesh. He should not be on any fucking, because, I mean, you gotta be wary of a guy that just doesn't care at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could be dangerous, I think. I mean, he could, he's, he could take too many unwanted risks. If you don't care at all, I mean, you, you're Well, we see the risks that he does life. take later on. He does, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's risks that not a lot of people would take if they had family or no. anything. But, uh, but his dad, Tommy Lee, he's a hero. He and, is. Everyone says he's a hero. Yep. That was a big thing. Is he was he died or he gave his life because everyone thinks because everyone thinks he's been dead for what ten years because the Lima Project went up when uh, Brad Pitt was sixteen, mm-hmm. and Brad Pitt in this he's like fifty. Yeah, he's like thir- No, he's like thirty five. I think he's still a young enough man. He can't be thirty five in this. What you don't think? I mean, Brad Pitt's not thirty five in real life. Well, definitely not. They he's de- in his fifties. They didn't but... de age him at all. He, yeah, I, I'm true. guessing forties. Yeah, maybe. probably forties. Yeah. But uh, so it's been a while though, and it's it been, has been a while. But it's been ten years since there's been no contact from the Lima Project. Yeah. Yes. So they were there up there for, you know, whatever twenty years maybe mm-hmm. doing their actual work. They didn't went completely silent. But it turns out it didn't go completely silent. It did not. They sent out some SOSs. They did. And the SOSs. Don't look good for Tommy Lee. <laughs> no. <laughs> and not good if you thought not. your dad has been dead for 30 years. And if you thought your dad was a hero. And if you haven't seen your dad since you were 16. That's true. So they get SOSs and they send it. Or they really just show that uh, that Tommy sent a video. Tommy Lee Jones. Yes. Father McBride. I don't know. Yeah, what, Roy, Roy McBride. Yeah, but uh, he sent a video saying that he's close, right? That he's right on the edge of... Uh, of contacting someone, mm-hmm. but this was after it went silent. Yep. So this is proof that uh, that possibly he's still alive. He's still alive, and yeah. he might be the one causing these uh, surges, these Neptune surges. Mm-hmm. But uh, but Roy has got to go up there and get him down because they can't contact him. No one, no one. I mean, because they think he's going off the rocker. Yeah, that's that's the initial. Uh, the thoughts because they yeah. don't hear from anyone else who was also a part of the Lima project. It was just him. But I love these scenes because uh, Brad Pitt, he's already the kind of person where 
he already dislikes everyone. He keeps everyone at distance. Mm-hmm. So he's or, because right at the start, you you start thinking uh, Amelia. They're they're telling there's something they're not telling him, which turns out there was something they were not telling him. Yeah. But uh, but you get that sense right at the start. But you get that sense with everyone that Brad Pitt encounters is that some they can all be bad because he he's the kind of person where he's keeping them all at distance. Mm-hmm. But he, everyone has interior. It's motives, like a ton of too. red hearings and like there's so many scenes in the film where I thought this might be lead to a bigger thing. Yeah, this will go somewhere because he's acting so weird about it. But it was just his personality. I mean, mm-hmm. that was that was his thing. But uh, yeah, so the whole plan is they got to get him to Mars because Mars was the only one that was untouched because mm-hmm. Mars community is underground. So that's their last antenna that wasn't affected by the surge. Yep. Got to go to the moon. Got to go to Mars. To to not scare any of the public, right? That was the big thing. It's a top secret mission. And they said, we're going to have you fly commercial as to not raise any alarms. Because again, everyone thinks Tommy Lee Jones is a hero. The public thinks he's a hero. Yes, but other people are starting to ask questions now. The people who got the information from him. Well, everyone that's seen that video is probably like, dude, he wasn't such a hero. He's got dark under his eyes and he's, you know, kind of a little, sounds a little wacky. But the cinematography and the the set design, the color and the, the slow motion of him like walking out the office and having to walk past his dad like every fucking day. It's really and have awesome your dad now. be looking down. Yeah, it's it's really good. And the imagery when he gets, well, he goes to the moon first. Yes, he's got to take commercial to the moon, but he's got to take someone with him. Someone that's, they say they're going to help him, but the guy's fucking watching him. I mean, it's yes. uh, it's Donald Sutherland. Yes, which is um, he's amazing, obviously, but uh, he's he's up there. He's Thomas Pruitt. Yeah, and his whole reason is uh, he was really good friends with uh. His Brad dad. Pitt's dad, yeah. uh, Roy McBride, Roy McBride's dad, yeah, and he wants to go up there and kind of see if he's dead or not because uh, Don Sutherland believes that he, he's alive mm-hmm. for some reason. He believes more than anyone else, and we yeah. find out that he actually has a little more reasoning to believe that. But uh, they get the moon; they have to fly commercial because uh, they don't want any suspicions. No one knows but. Don Sutherland and Brad Pitt what his mission is. Yeah. No one knows. No one knows. It's top secret. And yeah. I love, again, we get to the moon and the cinematography, the way this was shot was so cool. And how realistic of what so realistic. I would think a base on the moon would look Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Yes. That was my biggest thing. When I saw the base, I go, if, if like. It's not a most city re- or anything. No, it's, it's just. It's the most realistic yeah. looking base I've ever seen on a moon ever. I loved it, man. I loved it. it and that awesome. the scene of them driving on the moon and being chased by pirates was mm-hmm. one of my favorite scenes just the no sound or anything and the slow motion of it's not slow motion it's the moon's no gravity so every time they wreck it's just really fucking slow and when they went off the crater one of the craters and, and they're just spinning sp- in the yeah, air and, and he just like, lands it man, yeah. he just lands it perfect and then the pirates realize that too and they're like oh shit and they go and drive around and the and the guns that the the laser or the bolt pistol or whatever they have and just that boom boom when he yeah. shot to those both those guys and they just slumped down and i didn't i didn't have a problem with those guns either i thought oh no no these are realistic looking like well, space that's, guns if you had a if you had a gun in space that's what it would have to mm-hmm. be it wouldn't can be it but uh the only unrealistic part about the guns is just everyone having them like on the shuttle and just, like shooting them freely on the shuttle seems dangerous yeah to it me. does seem very dangerous. one one it wrong seems, hit uh, it seems yeah. like the whole shuttle might go down yeah i would say it's gonna suck you out of there into the fucking vacuum of space you don't want everyone to have a gun yeah. i think maybe one gun in like a safe or something mm-hmm. for precaution but <laughs> but don't just not, not everyone should it's a wild west, west. Space, not yeah. the shuttles at least now on the moon you need them because they got space pirates. They on have the space moon. pirates, and, and we also find out that the United States is not the only country that's on the moon and on Mars. There are other countries that have established places on the dark side of the moon and stuff. Well, yeah, not even necessarily the dark side. And just again, on the moon very realistic because no one owns the fucking moon. No, you can't. I don't. There's you no. You don't have rights. To there's the no space thing. law. You can't go down there and do a flag like you could. in when fucking Christopher Columbus came over and said, "Hey, this is mine now." You can't do that up in space. I do have a question, Cash. What are they gonna do though when we do settle on the moon and all those people who bought little plots of the moon to give to people? You know, it was like a certificate. How's that going to work out? <laughs> or people out? that buy stars. Yeah, people that buy stars. How is this going to Turns out, out those yeah. things aren't, uh, you can't hold those things up in court. Oh, that's <laughs> so, uh, so I wasted a hundred bucks on a You can't really own moon. a star. That's and too you bad. Can't get it on. <laughs> Guess I don't actually own part of the moon now. But uh, <laughs> con, con artist. It's a con artist, yeah, because <laughs> who's selling you that? No one owns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't own it. So what, what are you sending me this bill of sale yeah. for, you yeah. son of a bitch? Why am I paying you money for this? Uh, <laughs> that's on you, Mason. It is on me. But uh, uh, I will learn. But they go and uh, they go to the moon and they have to get to the far side of the moon. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
so they have to travel in rovers and they're it's a they're like first class high priority high priority to get to the other side of the moon because mm-hmm. he's like he's almost like the last goddamn chance of saving Earth because these because uh these blackouts keep happening it's killing I mean thousands of people we get like a, a news clip on on back on Earth and it said so far like forty thousand people died because of the first blackout. the first surge yeah which is a lot of people that's a lot of people <laughs> even even. Even in its entirety of people on the planet, that's still a lot oh, of people absolutely. to die yeah. from a surge. And it's going to keep getting worse and worse. Oh, for sure. And power keeps getting knocked out. But uh, but yeah, so they go and uh, all the people die from space pirates. Everyone but Brad Pitt and uh, Donald. Well, yeah, because they they are hell or they are um, escorted. Yeah. By uh, Corporal man, Lieutenant or nothing. whatever Sean Blakemore, yeah. who plays uh, Willie Lev- Levin, that guy. And then he just gets shot in the face. Yeah. But I like the realisticness cool, of this, man. though. It was, uh, the, that was then, brutal. It was brutal. The missile through the head. Mm-hmm. And, and then no, he had his picture of no his blood or anything. wife. Yeah. That was sad, man. But again, it was that whole thing of like Brad Pitt like looking at you know that him seeing the, a family and whatnot having real no impact on him or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, him just thinking, you know, that's the life. That's, you come in space, we, yeah. no family. It, according to Roy McBride, you had to cut all ties. But eventually they get to the other side of the moon. But they do. Uh, Donald Sutherland, heart attack. That's a little rough. too more excitement for the yeah. old man. He is up there in, in his age. I'm sure he's been on a lot of missions. <laughs> it, it gets to your heart after a while. You can't and he handle ca- that. He explains that him and his dad left on really bad terms. Yes. Because his dad was crazy like uh, Roy. And his dad wanted to sacrifice everything. And mm-hmm. Donald Sutherland's character was like... I can't. He gave he still th- had humanity left. Yeah, he gave thirty of him. years. And Tommy Lee was like, "You got to give a little more, my Come guy. On, You're getting dude. out of this easy. You're retiring now. Come on, we got another good thirty. You're only eighty. Yeah. Get your ass in space. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's wild it the is. amount of old men they're willing to send up in space. But hey, man, future. It's just maybe it's just that safe the travel is. Mm-hmm. I hope so, man. I and it's just you know being being part of history too. I think for some people is worth more than living a full life. Oh, I think yeah. some people want to go down in the history books. You know? Yeah. W- w- would you do it if, you, if they said, hey, you can go to Mars. You, you can go to Mars. You can be one of the first people on Mars, but you can't come back. Would you do it? Right now? Yes. <sighs> yeah, that's... That, I might. Yeah, I, would, I, I would honestly I consider honest, it. I, I would know, honestly it's so, consider it. It does... I mean, but this is the whole thing was like, the only thing stopping you is family, right? That's it's it. It's people here. That's it. People nothing that else. here. No, nothing else. If you were an orphan... I'd go in a heartbeat. <laughs> I would go in a heartbeat. Yeah, I was, and I'd be willing to die to do it. It's unfortunate that orphans don't have anyone that keeping them from space. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the only thing. That's the only thing. It's not the fact that I could die up there or anything. It's, it's the fact that, that people either. down here would suffer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, I'd be up there in a fucking RB. If only I didn't have these goddamn family I mean, members. You know you're probably not going to make it if you're one of the first people to go to Mars. But yeah. the idea that you could and just going, just being the first enough. person on Mars is going to suck. The first group, oh, it's going to be the it's, hardest. It'll be miserable. It'll be <laughs> you won't enjoy anything about it. No, it'll be oh, just every day working so damn hard. Mm-hmm. Just twelve, just starting a society. It's You're, not easy uh, from from the ground up. I mean, literally civilization as we know it. Oh yeah, starting from the ground floor. Yeah, when you go to Mars, but um, it's going to be horrible. It is, but they have Cold. found, you know, to, to kind of go off this, they have found water and stuff on Mars. Oh yeah. That was a big, a few years ago they found Ella, yeah. She's ready for us. She is. We just got to stop fighting down here. I wish we could. <laughs> it, and I know That's it'll only never stopping happen. I know us. it'll I never mean, happen, but if we could all put the greatest minds together, we, put we would our, be so much yeah. farther along in science and stuff oh, that we could all yeah. just get over, people get give, over ourselves. People have damn near, it's, it's. That's the weird thing about it. in the sixties. It was such a prideful thing to get up there and explore and expand. But now it's like people, oh, it's a waste of money. Yeah, it's a backseat kind of thing. I'm it's, like, no, this is what we need. We this need is space what, exploration. That's what humanity is all about. I think yeah. is exploring. That's what makes us humans. Exactly, and we've done it here on this planet for thousands of oh, years. Yeah, where people were yeah. discovering new places. We've discovered and it now, all. Like NASA now gets it's time to NASA's, go into space. It gets no funding. It's privately funded now. Yeah, now no one. I man. think is a disgrace. We we have to have these rich fucking billionaires privately fund it we have that i mean thank god for elon musk yeah exactly he's the only one keeping us hopes for uh for any kind space of space exploration yeah. yeah but yeah man it must be tough for those astronauts that gave so much in those early years and then to see it just go down the tubes completely mm-hmm. like i know yeah i know buzz aldrin doesn't I mean, like we it. are still doing we are still doing you know space you know where we're shooting rockets and we've had had successful missions to mars 
Yeah, but um, it's not. The, but it's not to the, the thirst of, of knowledge we that we have yes. when we were like, get our asses up there. When we were willing to send people up on fucking tin cans. Yeah. Nowadays, what, there's not. Yeah. That's what's so surprising to me. We were able to get someone to moon to the moon and back. You figured sixty years from then, we would be able to commercially yeah. fly we to sh- the moon. We should have a base. I think. There we, already. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think you if know? we kept that trajectory that we were keeping in the '60s, we would be. Fucking so looking at, we'd look yeah. be looking at we'd at least have a man mission to Mars. And that is why I don't support everything that he does, but I do support Space Force. Space Force. Space Force is Space, space Force. Is, space is, force. <laughs> space I do force. Not have you heard that song? It's so funny. <laughs> no, I it's not. Trump singing Space Force. <laughs> oh, and they dubbed oh, it. Oh, dude, it's hilarious. I've not I don't support Space Force because there's no I would support it once we get a colony up there. Like, what are they protecting right now? Well, but I mean, Space Force to get a colony. I, w- I would hope would be the end objective of that to be able to have. I a think base Trump's on the big moon. thing was to protect us from uh, in space, <laughs> like oh, in case, from aliens, from any, from any or any other space people, like pirates or whatever. I don't think his his whole mission wasn't to like further science. It was just to have another branch of the military to strong arm other countries. Oh yeah. See, I, I'd rather, I just want to split. No, it wasn't exploration, for exploration. Man. No. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't want an armed. I don't need, I don't think exploration comes, needs to come from wanting to colonize, you know, the galaxy. Or whatever. I also don't, but I also don't think it's a terrible idea either because we do have things like asteroids and stuff that we have to worry about. And if we had defense mechanisms here for the earth, we could shoot some of those down, hopefully. We have many, many uh, systems in line for tracking. But we have a lot of them who miss asteroids, too. A lot of them. Well, we've never had a big one hit us. <laughs> we almost did a couple months ago. We had we had one that came like within. It was closer to, than the moon was to us. It wasn't, but there was. It was no like destroyed. It was no risk or continent. any. I mean, yeah, they we have we're tracking all that stuff we, as best as we can. Yeah, and we do a pretty good job with it. Yeah, but, but I mean, we've never had a major meteor strike in the history. We of had that one in uh, Russia. Luckily, it didn't hit a city, but it would have leveled an entire city had it hit. That huge one in Russia about two, three years ago. It wasn't that big. It was. It was pretty big. It said it would have wiped out the a city if it would have hit it. I thought. I thought it was pretty big, but I didn't think it was going to wipe out a city. I thought it was. Yeah. No, I never. Heard, I never heard it was that big. Yeah, no. they said it was. Uh, it was just a big deal. Football it, fields big. It was just a big deal because everyone caught it on camera. Because in Russia, they have. Everyone's got dash cams. That is true. That, that was, is strange that we don't have more here in the states of dash cams. Yeah, but have I've you never seen the one. streets in Russia. That's true. Yeah. A lot <laughs> different than here. You have to, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you gotta have a lot of dash cams in Russia because you ever go on YouTube, it's wild over it there. Is. But uh, but yeah, he gets to space, gets to Mars, and uh, well, first before as Donald is giving him uh, as he's having a heart attack, I guess he gives him a uh, a futuristic flash drive. Or some yes. sort of video player, I guess. And he says, watch this shit. Tell no one. And did then he, he end up dying? I don't think he died. I don't think he heart did. Attack. I think he no. just had a heart attack. I think attack. he just had a heart attack and then he couldn't go any farther. Yeah. yeah. They said they had to rush him into emergency yes, surgery, surgery later on. But, uh, but, but that was because Brad Pitt asked about it. And they said they rushed him to emergency surgery. He just waved it off like it was nothing. But then they never told us if he lived through the surgery or not. But I guess yeah. it was irrelevant. It didn't matter either it way. It really was. And that was kind of even the first instance that we got from uh, Roy that he even cared about someone. Mm-hmm. Because he was his, that kind of, uh, him asking about someone. Someone, yeah, Means exactly. that he actually yeah. at least cares, even if it's very surface level. Exactly, yeah. So you, you almost get that, that humanity is still, again, to me, this whole time watching it was like, he wasn't born you know that that way he he made himself that way because that's what his his dad did and that's what he thought he needed to do because yeah. again he thinks his dad's a hero he does he's been told his entire life that his dad's a hero turns out uh, don't know if that's the case <laughs> borderline maybe even uh, cult hero yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they get to uh, Mars and he gets on uh... well first he, we got to talk about the shuttle he gets on because the the crew he boards with they're long haulers. Yeah, they're uh, mm-hmm. yeah they're uh, it's a wacky group for sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're going and they're they're just taking him to Mars because they need to go to Mars and they just think he's hitching a ride. Right. But and uh, again, it's top secret, so they don't think anything of it. And I like that narration that that uh, Brad Pitt had with himself, where he goes, "Oh, they're long haulers. They don't even think anything of this. Yeah. They don't know what I'm on here for." You know. And uh, and this is the first instance that we get. Uh, 
Well, we got earlier in the video, Tommy Lee Jones, he says a prayer or whatnot, mm -hmm. like when the crew's going up. And then this guy the, of this shuttle says a, says a prayer says too. a prayer also. Yep. And that's what I was talking off camera. I was talking about how this movie had so many like religious parallels. I it thought. did. And it's, it just begs the question of once you do find alien life, is there any point for religion anymore? That's what the future is. I mean, that's that's a big question of the future. Or even, you think so? Well, yeah, because and that's what this movie. Sh sh oh yeah, man. Well, there's I like no. The, I like the idea. I like the question, but. Oh yeah, absolutely, and that's yeah, no. But there's I mean, millions of galaxies out there. There's got to be a superior being in some form, in a way. Even if we find intelligent life out there, there can still be a creator. Yeah, exactly. You know? But is it Jesus Christ? <laughs> I, okay, yeah, you're talking. Is it about, a like, man? Yeah, because right. they're. The, well, man, that's God. Because they weren't, they were just sins, saying a kind of prayer thing. of the earth, like mm -hmm. Mother Nature, keep me strong. They yes. were saying a prayer to Jesus. And at one point, even the shuttle, he's doing a St. Christopher's prayer, even yeah, a, a, so it shows that he yeah. was Catholic. That's right. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big thing. And I definitely think they did that on purpose because the future asks those questions, you know, once it gets to. And if we alien ever do life, find. I mean, yeah, but I mean, whether, whether you think, whether you're religious or not, there's no reference in the Bible to alien to life. To alien life, right. So there's no, I mean, so once you really, I would say the only reference is, um, God being judged by other, I don't know, some, there's a little thing in the Bible, but it's like a little snip bit, but there's no like real intelligent, intelligent life form outside of earth. Yeah. That's, that's what this supposed to think is we're, we're, the whole thing is we're special because we're the only ones. Right. <laughs> Cause God only gave us this gift. Mm -hmm. So we kind of found, it'd be the whole thing. If we found aliens is everyone would just have to ask the question. If you're religious, you would just have to ask yourself is, do I still move forward or do I bind? Because I'm like, if you're not, if it turns out that you're not special at all. And that was the whole thing is like towards the end is like, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's like we're the only ones we have to rely on. There's no one out else out there that mm -hmm. is going to save us. Right. But, uh, but yeah, so so there go. They're long haulers, but they get a distress call. They Fucking do. Every time you every go time. into space, you get a distress call. Of course. And every time you go to that distress call, it never murder. turns out. Ends in you. murder. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, a no Norwegian biomedical research space yes. station or spaceship that is uh, calling out this distress signal. And, and Brad Pitt, Roy... Roy McBride, or not Roy McBride. And they say it uh, even a couple times that I caught on. It's animal, re they're doing animal research. Mm -hmm. Something that Animal I, research, yeah, that that's I, what they said. Something that I noticed that they said twice. I'm like, why? Well, why would you say that Exactly, twice? why are you saying that twice? You're kind and of Why like, is there animal research in the middle of moon to the Mars? Why are you guys out there? Just because you got to like uh, see the kind of impact that space would have. Because I mean, if you want to go to Mars, you got to get animals up there. You got to do something. So yeah, you got to see what a... kind of, that's why they do like plants and see what kind of, and just to see what kind of well, impact. We did that too. We we sent plans to what the moon or Mars. Oh, there's to plants, grow, and we grew plants on Mars. There's plants at the International Space Station right now. They yeah. they're constantly growing plants. Yeah, yeah. But th that's the whole thing is the Norway. They were just experimenting. Why not? I mean, the fucking. Why do countries do anything? Why do we send dogs up into space? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Test those waters, baby. And we talk we talk <laughs> about the Russians. They sent a dog up there knowing that dog was never going to come. Yeah, La home. Lackia the dog. Yeah. Poor little lack. I know. It was like a little Jack Russell. It was a cute It was. Too. May he rest in peace. That was one space. of those where, like, we don't have a real idea of how so little lack is send a dog. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder where that dog is now. Because they just sent it up and said, okay, so it's probably just floating somewhere deep in space by now. I'm thinking he's just floating around the orbit of Earth. Oh, you think still? <laughs> yeah, because he barely, I mean, he, you break. I mean, he didn't go very far because he was the first thing in space. Yeah. So he didn't go very far. And once you, I mean, you really got to uh, get a ways out to once you break Earth's gravity, mm -hmm. you know, so you have That's to, true. you have to get somewhat towards. So I don't think, because I know, I know there's, because when spaceships go up and they release their canisters or whatever, mm -hmm. That stuff just orbits around. Some of the times it falls back in space, but apparently there's just a ton of Oh, there's trash. so much space junk up there. Yeah, apparently yeah, it's, it's really like, bad. Like, you think it's bad on Earth? Apparently it's supposed to be, like, people. And not even from, like, satellites, because, like, when someone sends up a satellite, once you stop using that satellite, it just you don't bring it down. You no, just stop you, using don't, it. you don't tie a string to it and just pull it down like a car. Yeah, or you don't even have, like, a rocket system, because you can't land it mm -mm. it's just gonna crash somewhere so you just leave it so there's so many just there's so much yeah junk. there's a ton of junk up there. i'm sure if any alien flies back earth they're like, what, what is the this fuck is this <laughs> the trailer park of fucking <laughs> of planets, planets. yeah they're like you know what let's just pass this one yeah. but uh 
But yeah, so I think it's that's very probably pop- why we've never gotten visited. They take one look at our outer rim and they're like, yeah, yeah we're or they good. take one look down here. <laughs> they see that there's no hope for these people. Like these beings are fighting each other. Yeah, we're, we're fighting other planets. What do yeah, you guys? Yeah, baby, doing? we're fighting yeah. space fucking wars. These guys, these guys are idiots. Under- they're not even worth our time, stupid primates. That and that's a huge. That is actual theory. That. Uh, Oh, it is actually a theory. Oh, yeah, yeah that you can just skip yeah. over us, yeah. Because there would be no, what could they get from us? Nothing. If they're eating, I mean, maybe of... natural resources like water and stuff, but you're trying to tell me but they don't they're... have that already? <laughs> if they're advanced or if they're, they're in deep <laughs> space travel, they probably I'm guessing they create move... the atoms to make I'm water guessing they move past ha- yeah. having to rely on <laughs> like fuel and stuff. Yeah, or like eating food. I'm sure but, uh, science has gotten much farther for them. But they go, they, they board the ship on the Norway ship, right? Yes. And, uh, Dead, dead quiet on there. Mm. They have to do a fourth. And uh, right when they're going, no one wants to go out to the ship. No. Even though the captain was a guy who wanted to go there. But no one wants to board that, uh, the Norway vessel. Mm-hmm. Then they're all, even, but Brad Pitt just wants to get it fucking going. He's the only one not scared. Right. Well, and we should probably, what is, uh, yeah, so we got to go back a little bit. Because remember Brad Pitt landed first. He landed the ship. Because the other guy couldn't do it. That's not on Mars yet. We're talking about the Norway ship. They're still in space. Oh, that's right. Okay, never mind. That's never a, mind. yeah. So yeah. So they so they board the ship first. They board the ship. No one's there. It, it looks like there was a struggle. Yeah. It's him and the captain of the shuttle that he took. He, yep. They were the only ones brave enough. And uh, thank God that Brad Pitt just volunteered because that guy would have been. I mean, that guy got fucked anyways. But, yeah. He uh, did. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and it looks really weird. And at this point, you're thinking aliens, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, I was like, oh, and all these weird markings. When exactly, going and the whole the time. Station. And I'm thinking this movie is about to take some weird leap because right now it's it's really tied in realism and whatnot. So right, I'm thinking right now it's about to take a leap, and we're about to get the first instance of. Alien, but no, it's an animal vessel, and I'm guessing they were. Uh, it doesn't really get into it. But I'm guessing they were hit by the surge. Mm-hmm. All the power went out or whatever. And, and so they, all the doors opened. And it released the fucking bab- space baboons. Yeah. And it's a brutal, that was a and brutal these, scene. Oh, it was super brutal, man. And these these baboons were not, and baboons are actually very vicious in real life. Oh, they're terrible. Super goddamn, vicious. And they always go for your testicles. Yes, always. They rip <laughs> them off first. Or, chimpanzees are, anyway, go for your testicles and then go for your eyes and your face and yeah. they're going to rip your face off. But, and that's what they do. They eat, start with your nose and they just eat your face yep. away. And that's what happened to this guy too. But that scene was so good of mm-hmm. Brad Pitt going through and the cat and just sitting there. Yeah, and he was like kind of shaking a little bit. Yeah, so it looks like he's still yeah. alive. But really, it was just a fucking baboon eating his face. That was... Cr- you don't you don't imagine you're going to see a baboon. Even no. the, even in the movies, you don't imagine. No, I had no all. idea. That. Yes, and when I it saw was, it, I was it like, was what? so surprising. It was like, what the fuck? At first, I'm like, is this an alien that looks like a baboon? <laughs> like a baboon <laughs> from some other planet gets so advanced that they... But no, it's just a baboon that's probably been up there and starving to death. Yeah. And I'm guessing that these animals killed everyone on board. Mm-hmm. They must have been doing some. They must have been doing like uh, Planet of the Apes level experiments on right. these baboons because they looked angry. They looked pissed. <laughs> very, very upset. But uh, it's a very tense moment. He barely gets away from the baboon because again, you're in space. You can't can't move. Float. There's no <laughs> you're friction just anywhere, yeah, so you're floating. Yeah. And there's because there's two baboons. He has mm-hmm. to shoot one, and the other baboon he kind of uh, comes around the corner, kind of thing, and sees him. And he barely gets away. He he pulls that guy's body out because he thinks that maybe uh, he's still alive. Which and he I was love because he was trying to tape up his mask. Remember? I don't know if he was still alive or he, if Brad Pitt was just hoping. hoping. Yeah. Because remember, we get because it just for a second it floats his arm up and his arm is his a arm's nub. eaten too. Yeah, and it's all chewed. And that's up. a lot of blood loss. <laughs> oh, a ton. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he was ever even alive. Because and then we get the picture of his face also, and his neck is like his neck's ripped out. It's and brutal. Too, yeah. yeah. But he does. He gets out, and uh, I love the scene where he kills the monkey, where he just opens it up, and the vacuum just blows him up. Yeah. But uh, well, and that's actually how how it works too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, you just it, explode. it sucks yeah. all the all the air out of yeah. you immediately, essentially. But uh, they so they escape that and uh, they get back on one. So that's one guy down, dead, and now the whole crew is kind of freaked out. And again, Brad Pitt didn't want to go to that goddamn ship in the no, first place. No, he said, "Let's just move past it." But it's space protocol, and you always got to go by space law. That's why space force is up there enforcing them laws. Exactly. They got to enforce it. <laughs> you get a space ticket. You, and do. you don't want to go to space court. And you don't park where you're not supposed to in space. You'll get a space yeah. ticket. Uh, and you don't want to go to space people. jail. No. Because you'll get space raped. 
<laughs> that's a Nothing whole nother works. level. <laughs> getting raped in zero G is the only thing getting ra- raped in regular gravity. It's brutal up there. <laughs> it's brutal. You're just flowing around. Every, everyone's got dibs on in you. Your butt. They're like, tossing no. you around yeah. like a, like a pop like a, can. Like a, like a, a beach ball <laughs> like at a, beach a concert. Ball at a, <laughs> your at, turn, Jeff. At a baseball game, yeah. So you don't want to do that. You do not. But uh, so they follow space law, ends up getting their face ripped off, and uh, but eventually they make it to Mars only, only because Brad Pitt takes the helm from the guy that it's just He's freaks a out. I mean, he kind just, of is. He just freaks out about everything. He was the same guy who didn't want to go because he was supposed to go, and this is where I got confused. But that was the same guy who was supposed to go yeah. in and said he couldn't go, and then he was supposed to land the ship and couldn't land the ship. Yeah, he was just scared <laughs> yeah. in general. And so Brad Pitt. Of course, he wasn't. That guy Brian. wasn't the captain. He's a co-captain. Yes. So he is heavily relying on the on other the guy. Captain. And it does add on that you just saw your co- that your captain get space, space get torn off. So yeah. I see there is heavy. And of course, it's also the thing that maybe that would happen have happened to anyone. I mean, it's tough to see your be- probably your best friend get torn up by a monkey and then have to land a, a shuttle on Mars. So Manually, it goes to the point that only it goes to the, the point surge. that only Brad Pitt could have done that yeah. kind of thing because his because he has no fear or anything he no. has no heart rate. So. You see that with even his psych evaluations, he talks about death. He goes, "We're here, we do a job, and then we go." And he says, he "Talks in absolutes or absolute excuse me absolutes a lot." Oh yeah, absolutely, there's no yeah. like fine questioning or anything. And I think that's why I think with a character like that, he's so defined. And I got to do those kind of. I got to bring up he has an inner monologue in this movie, and I, I mm-hmm. in movies, movies with inner monologues are usually really a hit and miss for me. Sometimes I think it's too much, where you know you're getting him narrating it too, too Some, much. Something right. I think it's just. I thought it was under, just enough in this. Though. I thought it worked really well because mm-hmm. you wanted to know what he was thinking, but it, his thoughts were uh, they were crazy thoughts. You know, everything was every everyone's kind of against him and everyone's uh, suspicious mm-hmm. and whatnot and and how they're all kind of lower than him kind of a whatnot. schizophrenic in a weird way too i mean not like severely but in the way that well, he could never very trust paranoid anyone. that paranoid. everyone is lying to him mm-hmm. and whatnot but again it comes from daddy issues <laughs> and that comes I mean, understandable that comes from your dad abandoning you and really you're not being i guess raised by it, not telling but uh but yeah, they go to Mars, and he mar- he he tells the guy that it ends up coming later. He tells the guy, "I'm not going to tell any. I'm not going to report this." Mm-hmm. He's like, "Because I kind of understand." But uh, yeah. but that ends up playing later because they end up giving those guys a huge mission. Had he reported it, they would have never given never. that guy. I mean, if they knew that guy couldn't land a fucking ship, they would have never given that guy the last fucking mission to Lima or whatever. But uh, but yeah, so they land it, and uh, they land on Mars, and we probably get the best scene of Brad Pitt. Best scene, best acting scene of the movie of Brad Pitt calling his dad, mm-hmm. and just Brad Pitt being in alone that in that room. soundproof room. And that the first one he gets, he just reads from the script. But the second one he gets, and he just he breaks down. Mm-hmm. It's really, it's and again, a good fucking scene. And I think too. you can almost nominate Brad for an Oscar. On That's what one. I was going to bring that up later on, and yeah. I totally agree with you, Cash. I thought this was such this a good film. Might have not been, it might have not been perfect, and I don't think no. it was. I don't think it was a perfect film. I really enjoyed it, but the acting was damn near perfect. It was <laughs> by From everyone. everyone. Tommy yeah. Lee Jones, he had a small role, but I think you might even be able to nominate for him best for supporting. supporting. Because those those scenes with him and Brad are just so fucking powerful, especially at the end when they come face to face too. Yeah, because there's know. so little other people really interacting in this movie. It's really all about Brad. Because you're supposed to feel that solitude. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to feel like because he feels like he's alone. He yes. feels there's no one else, and we're supposed to feel like that because everyone is an outsider. Even the lady that helps him on Mars. Because eventually they get eventually Brad Pitt does break through to his dad, and Tommy Lee he does uh, he sends a. They think he sends a message back. Yeah. Oh, and by the time uh, Brad Pitt has already seen the video that uh, Don Sutherland gave him, and it showed his dad uh, killing, I guess, in kind killing of killing everyone from killing the on the project. crew. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. a tough video to watch, <laughs> <laughs> especially when you thought your dad was a hero your whole entire life. Again, you just keep getting like re- people keep telling you your dad was actually a piece of shit. Yeah. And but this is the real video that Brad Pitt, because now Brad Pitt. Because he says, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to kill him. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to take care of it. He's like, I got to do this. But uh, but they take him off of it. After that second message to his dad, they say, no, you're not going now. Yeah, because you can see he's starting to become... He's too attached to the mission. Too attached and too... And, and they bring up the fact that for the first time, his heart rate went over 80 beats per minute. 
Yeah, when he was talking his to pulse, his dad. Yeah. And when they found and when he found out that his dad was still alive. That's when his pulse started going mm-hmm. up because remember he's like And he failed his psych evaluation, the first one ever. Yeah. After that. He did. And I that and I, I was almost wondering like when he failed his psych was like was that whatever people were in charge making him fail no matter what? Just making sure that he didn't go back up mm-hmm. there and whatnot. Because I don't think – I think once – because he says it. They were using him. They were using him just to make sure that Tommy Lee was still alive just to – Oh, absolutely. It's, it's apparent as soon yeah. as they say no more and they give they give the mission to someone else. Yeah. They were using him the whole time. And fascinating, uh, fascinating enough, Brad Pitt brings that up. He knew yeah, but that's when a, he read the script the first time. He goes it, the narration, the inner yeah. monologue. He goes, "They're using me." Yeah, right? exactly. Red Star. Yeah, but that's the kind of paranoia you start feeling. You start feeling his paranoia. With mm-hmm. me, I, I kept thinking like, "Are these psyche valves just controlled by someone? Is someone just?" I mean, because even when he's doing the psyche valves, it's not very believable that no, he's it's okay. Not. He's just saying. I mean, he's saying. So is he, so are people just leaving just letting him keep going and going that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking the government's controlling these psyche valves and just because he should have been taken off the fucking space force or whatever nasa long ago and i'm thinking they're just keeping keeping him going because he's the best of the best yep it's like tom cruise at some point you got to stop tom cruise but he just keeps (laughs) Keeps going going. and going we just at this point he's the best you know before you know (laughs) he should have been locked up he should have been locked up a long time ago but at this point we're all okay with it we're all just (laughs) We all just kind of live life. We only expect it. It's we just not know okay what to expect. for poor Tom, but he is suffering on the inside. <laughs> but we love his movies. Yes. So we keep him going. But uh, then, yeah, uh, after, after they yeah, lock him up. They lock him up. Yeah. And after, well, they send him to the quote yeah. unquote comfort room. Is what <laughs> the comfort room is just brick a nice walls way of saying, and yeah. projector. Yeah, it's a nice way of saying you're being locked up. But I really did love those scenes, man. And I loved the background of the waves, the infinite waves. I was like, I know it's so I hard paying, paying attention. It's so hard to talk that. about like cinematography, like just talk about it without mm-hmm. really showing it. Extreme. But yeah, those scenes of him and with the background that kept changing and yeah. whatnot and it being like, and it was so beautiful. And Every, it was. Everything in the, in the sounds and stuff. I could see how those comfort rooms would actually help those individuals. Yeah, but especially when you're on Mars and you see no life form around you. It's also you at all. a very like dystopian thing. Comfort mm-hmm. rooms, like lock this guy in the comfort room to it. lock him. Like they're forcing him to be comfortable. Uh-huh. That's the kind of thing. It's kind of to dystopian relax. to me. But you gotta, you would have to have those kind of things on Mars. You would have because you can't. Because people would go crazy. They'd go delusional. And you can't have anyone go crazy on one person goes crazy. That puts the whole it, thing in jeopardy. Right. So one person tries to it. open the airlock or something. And that's and why dies. those psyche valves. And that Are that's again important. something that's realistic. Is I think once, if we ever do get regular into space, oh, we have to have we'll regular have to psych, psych evaluations yeah. for everyone who goes up there. I don't know what week. they do once they fail one when they're in space already. You just gotta lock that guy down or we something. We put him in a comfort room. <laughs> I think these guys got it down, man. But what if you're on the shuttle and you're fatal? <laughs> that could be a problem. You just yeah. send him out. Space. I think you just send him in the airlock. Time to go for a little space walk, yeah. Brad. And <laughs> space just, walk. Yeah. Just send him out. But uh, yeah, so they lock him up. But uh, the leader of the the person in charge of the Mars colony breaks him out. Mm-hmm. But we got to talk about this first before, because he's in that comfort room, and uh, he's visited by uh, Lantos, which who reveals that she was born on Mars, the daughter yeah. of Ruth the Nega. Lima. Yep. Yeah, the uh, daughter of the Lima Project crew members, and she basically shows Roy. Uh, she shows uh, Roy classified footage revealing that Clifford's crew. Mutant, uh, mutinied by trying to return to Earth, so that her, her, that his father is not good. Yeah, she shows him more footage. Yeah, <laughs> it gets every time he's got to sit down and watch a video, it gets worse. It and gets worse. worse and worse for him. But uh, yeah, she shows him, and but she, the scene's very good because she's very hesitant about showing him. She's mm-hmm. like, I think you need to see this, and, and, and she doesn't and, hate him either. She says that no. she, he's a, pro- yeah. she's, he's the same product as her. Because where they've both been exactly. torn away because they both yeah. have family. They're 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 not just family. Their parents uh-huh. go, fl- go away from them. Yeah, never exactly. Come back. Yeah, and uh, at least their family, their couple went together. I mean, that even seems more sane to me. That seems more sane. See, I think that seems more fucked up because you leave your daughter. Yeah, behind well, that's 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 and the you big go thing. as yeah. a couple. Uh-huh. That's that's terrible. You're terrible parents. Yeah, but why gl- have a kid to begin with? But again, Ruth Nega was a lot, or Ruth. Uh, or Helen is her name in this. Uh, she uh, she was born on Mars, which is a, a kind of a big thing that they say. She's mm-hmm. never known anything but space. That is true. So maybe you already have this distant kind of thing where if you're born on Mars and your your parents out obviously because her parents were in charge of the Mars colony mm-hmm. first. So I mean, how much time do you really have for a kid? 
Good point. <laughs> I mean, it is yeah. brutal, but of course, and of course, they're also thinking they're saving her life. And they're trying by to leaving. populate Mars as well. And by going to the Lima Project, they're thinking, if I don't go, Earth is going to die, and my daughter is probably going to eventually die. If Good I can point. go now, I can save them, I can save generations. And they thought they were going to come back. Yeah, so they weren't in their eyes abandoning their daughter, they're saving their daughter. Mm-hmm. Little did an old crazy and, Tommy know, Lee's up yeah. there, and he had and other there plans. was no return mission. <laughs> but that, that also brings... Again, a good way to tie the story in because those parents wanted to come back. Oh, absolutely. And that's basically yeah. where yeah. the mutiny started on the Lima Project is because everyone wanted to go back. And Tommy Lee Jones was so hell-bent on this mission that there was no return in sight. No. Uh, there was – yeah. And they were up there for a very long time. They were up mm-hmm. there for their mission uh, length, their duration. Right. And they weren't finding anything. Nope. And they said, we just got to, we, we, we got to come Cause the home. mission was never to be stay up there forever. No, it wasn't there. It was a legit return mission. Yeah. Cause in their mind, they were going to go up there, be up there for a couple of years and contact someone. Yeah. But, uh, that wasn't the case. Years and years went by and there was just dead silence. And, uh, I think that is what broke Tommy Lee Jones is years and years of being disappointed. I think Tommy out of everyone thought he was going to go up there. And I think that was part of the religion thing is he's going to go up there and meet his maker, you know, meet, yep. meet his, whatever he believes is God. So him, and again, him going up there and kind of, uh, not hearing anyone, maybe that ruined religion for him. Mm-hmm. Maybe there is no one up there. So it's, it's a crazy thing. It's it a is. crazy philosophical thing where it's like, if you hear someone, do you stop believing God? If you don't hear someone, do you stop you believing, stop believing. God? Yeah. He's got to be up there somewhere, right? It's that question. It is. It's a, it's a wild question. It is. It is a, it's a wild question to ask, especially it's a wild question to ask someone that's very religious, like mm-hmm. Tommy Lee Jones' character. Right. We get the sense that he was very, semi-religious. or I mean, he does multiple prayers going up there and Definitely. whatnot, so you think he is. But uh, but yeah, man, you lose your faith. Yeah. <laughs> going to space is going to do something to it you. It could. It, You're, they're going to come down a lot more religious, I think. Or a lot less. A lot less religious, yeah. But uh, it's a cool thing for a movie to ask. Definitely. It's a cool thing for, uh, but, uh, but yeah, they, like you said, uh, there's nothing up there. Tommy Lee Jones ended up killing everyone Yep. on the, on the crew because, uh, yeah. So Tommy Lee Jones ended up killing everyone and, uh, they ended up having to go or the, the mission, the new mission is they're the new crew is going to go up there, set a nuke off. Yes. <laughs> I think a small bomb would have done. But they're gonna erase this fucking thing from the uh, from existence. From existence, they don't want. I guess they were thinking maybe Tommy Lee Jones might survive it. <laughs> like you got <laughs> like a just nuke a standard his... <laughs> grenade, he's gonna survive. So let's you got to nuke, nuke his all. ass out of the fucking stratosphere because this guy is insane. He's not gonna stop. But uh, yeah, so they get up there and uh, Brad Pitt eventually. Well, we got. He... I love this scene because he he sneaks on to this. I know, and it goes from zero to a hundred real quick. So I'm not a danger. Kills all three. <laughs> people on there but to be fair i mean they were the ones attacking him he was like i'm just here for the ride and they're like commit because they were trying to get back to base like, yeah. what do we do do we do we you know do yeah we and this was something this that i i thought do? a lot about this scene a lot with like the killing and like justification again all that crew was on borrowed time had brad pitt not been there they would have crashed that yep they would all died so i mean the life all those lives were lives that he saved at the first and he ultimately ends up he had, ending all of them he did and and the reasoning that he did it and it's almost like not enough good enough reason to have killed those people for to do it right. but of course he said you're never going to get to ne- to wherever neptune is without him and to be fair that guy couldn't land on mars he's not landing anywhere near no, neptune that guy's he's not having, even getting there probably. yeah i'm surprised he's he fucking uh, passed his psyche vows i <laughs> see that's a good question that's something i didn't yeah. think about but yeah how did he pass that his guy psych was evaluation? Cause remember they would see him later on mars just pass him and the guy doesn't even look at him Mm-mm. but uh yeah they go up there and he kills yeah it's a scene where he kind of strategically well remember Roy well, passes him and he was like hey how's it going that's what I'm saying like, hey. yeah. and yeah. the guy doesn't even look at him nope. so you knew something up was immediately Roy does he ends up in the scene of Roy going like underground and whatnot and getting up to where he's like he had to go through like the fuel or whatever uh-huh. he had to swim up through it and that scene with him and just in the darkness again it was very kind of eerie it and was. odd but he does he gets on kills the entire crew <laughs> And I like that third death where he tries to save the guy with oxygen, but it's too late. When you release that into the atmosphere, yeah, 
you breathe it in. Like when you when you get released in space, all the air gets sucked out and you, you can't breathe. And in. your lungs You're collapse. Done. Yeah, they collapse. Yeah, it's they, over with. Yeah. And I like how they showed that with the last guy he was trying to save with the oxygen, but it was too late. He couldn't even intake. It did. It and then gone. from they here it gets, it's like from here, it's just the downward spiral. Spiral, You know, he's in total isolation now. Mm-hmm. He's going through uh, months and months traveling to Neptune. The G forces take its toll on him. He hallucinates. It's amazing scenes, man. I want to go is. back and watch these scenes because they're so. Because it's that thing is, or is it the the G force and is it also his mental illness? Is it a combination of both? Right. But uh, yeah. He, but he finally gets to the ship and he he boards his ship and uh, again it doesn't look good. No. But he, and again he doesn't think his dad is alive. Mm-mm. The entire time, Roy, you get the sense that he doesn't believe he's actually alive. Yeah. That he died a while ago, but uh, he gets in there, and that's he finds him. Yep. I love the scene of him like setting the bomb, and then Tommy Lee is up, and it really gave me the imagery of God speaking down, down on yeah, absolutely because because he's doing his thing, and uh, and he just goes Roy, Roy, and you get that echo, and that's how God always talks to you. He right. always just goes Mason. <laughs> I mean, you gotta go. What the fuck? He never he never starts a conversation by going like, "What's up? What's yeah, going like, on, hey, Bucker?" He, <laughs> he, he, he always just much. goes, "Cash, cash," <laughs> and you gotta be like, "What the fuck?" But yeah, that that was the whole image thing. It's like, like that Zoolander scene. He's like, "God, yeah." He's like, "It's me, you stupid." No, Maury Balvich. <laughs> yeah, Bal- God, what the hell are you talking about? It's so funny. <laughs> this stupid just, little tiny. He's cell talking. Phone. God, what the hell are you talking about? It's so. Funny. It's more evolved, yeah. But yeah, that that was the whole imagery of God and everything was just at towards the end. It was so uh, apparent to me. Yes, with that and him thinking Roy, and then he just looks up in the light and he just goes, he just he says like, doesn't he say Father? Mm-hmm. Exactly something you would say you would if you say. saw God. Yeah. You, but uh, but yeah, he sees it and uh, he ends up telling it. And eventually, uh, Tommy Lee says he hated everyone on Earth. And but, that he didn't care about him or his mother. Yeah, and but all. when you ask me, do I take Tommy Lee's side? This is this is exactly what I was talking about. Is like I think he was up there so long he had to convince himself that there was yes. nothing left for him. That I don't think he really hated because him. because it goes back to mankind and, and and the people who are happy and the people that aren't. And, and every single person has to find their purpose. Yeah. And this was Tommy Lee Jones' purpose. He could not let family. He could not let anything get in the way of that no. and that's why he had to come to that yeah. you don't say it's brave of him yeah in a in a very dark dark yeah way, exactly it is. Yeah, like how, how difficult would it be to just tear up unless you're already in that mindset and you're a fucking serial killer and whatnot how how terrible would it be to have to to say all right i, I have to do this for everyone i'm do, yeah. right now it's gonna be but uh, no family no anything and that's what tommy lee thought he said mm-hmm. if i if i care about anyone then i can't do this job right. i can't but he was doing a job that probably couldn't be done, couldn't be accomplished, and he couldn't handle that. But uh, somehow Roy convinces him to get off the ship, which I didn't think he was going to be able to. No, neither did I. <laughs> but again, Tommy Lee looks, he's got cataracts. Mary's mm-hmm. he's blind almost, and uh, he's just kind of, the ship looks horrible. It's in not good condition. And then when Roy did board it, we see all the dead bodies floating, and one's yeah. got a bag over its face to show that they were suffocated. Yeah. Yeah. That Tommy Lee individually killed each, killed and every each one, one of these. Of Again, a difficult job to do. But it if is. you're going to save Earth, if it ended up working out for him and Tommy Lee ended up ca- contacting aliens. He would have been a hero. He would have been a hero. Yep. And those people would have been traitors. Exactly. Or would have been cowards. But it doesn't work that way. No. <laughs> but yeah, he ends up doing it. and uh, well, It goes back to that famous expression, winners write history. That's not, true. Not the losers. Yeah, you don't. You know. Who knows what history really really happened? We don't know. We don't because because the, the winners. <laughs> I'm sure it didn't it happen for... the way that we mainly think it happened. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, he gets him off and uh, but again, Tommy Lee he can't leave. No, space is his home now. He's been up there for so long. He, he can't go back to Earth. One, he's a murderer. He's going to go sit in a cell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, eventually, Brad Pitt has to let him go. Which I love these shots, man. I love these scenes. They were so beautiful in that deep space with Neptune in the background. They were, man. Just the coldness, the quietness, the yeah, this him floating away, and Mm -hmm. even the this is where maybe the science kind of bent a little as Brad Pitt uh, trajecting himself towards the ship. That seems awful hard to do. Just just the aim of it seems hard hard for me to do. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I can get blasting yourself off because in space it's just it's uh, momentum. Yeah, so whatever momentum is. you you take, you, you keep. Stay at. You keep, you keep yeah. forever for eternity. But because uh, he couldn't even see the ship, I feel like when he looked up because he, had to, he had to go through the asteroid field. He had to go too. through an asteroid, or, not an asteroid field, but whatever they were. Cir- they were orbiting around Neptune. Yeah, the belt, the Neptune's belt. belt yes. Yeah, and, but uh, which which what I hear is not impossible. Like it would be possible to float through a belt. Yeah. Because uh, usually they're not very dense. They're usually it's usually just ice. But like and it I said, the stop too with his trage- trajectory. Yeah. The rocks actually hitting exactly. Help him but like slow I said, the aiming bit. of just blasting off into deep space. Because <laughs> again, it's I, a ballsy move, Cotton. It's a balls. But it's what other move did he have? Not much. He didn't have very. It was many the last options, one. Yeah. It was the last one. But uh, yeah, he does, and he eventually takes the long trip home. I thought again, you're thinking there's no way he's making it home. No, I didn't think that either. I thought it was a, a suicide mission. But it was the thing where he he got that humanity back from seeing his dad and seeing that he did not want to be that person. No. And I love how even though his dad said that he, he hated him and his mm-hmm. mom, he he never gave up on him. Because, again, right. he thought the whole thing that he had to give up. And he, his dad obviously thought he was in the right, where he was being a murderous dick. But, yeah. Uh, but Tommy uh, – but Brad – so Brad Pitt comes back to Earth and uh, – I like even the small details of like when he he landed back on Earth and uh, before even when he landed he was hesitant even when the the, the rescuers came and grabbed him, mm-hmm. but for this one he lands and he reaches out yeah, for the human- reaches and for that him gives and you the him. instance that maybe uh, humanity has been restored and it, and again it was because Brad Pitt had to take had to say that if we're gonna survive it's gonna be us yeah. it's not any aliens it's not any outside force it's us question though when they were on Neptune do you think that was an alien being in space that little fireball that was floating around I, I think so I thought it was too I mean it's I thought because it kind of pointed at, uh, uh, but it also could have even been the sun it could have been yeah <laughs> or another planet or yeah. anything but I kept thinking we were gonna get Brad Pitt just given up floating in space and, and I the thought aliens something pick him was up gonna... somehow and then transport but him to the ship I really like the way that they did it where they just no aliens at all nope. and they Nothing. left it open to interpretation absolutely too. yeah I really felt that way with is there aliens is there not yeah, I liked it. Absolutely, there and was it was no defining question. And it was there the was thing no where, yeah, if we are going to save ourselves, it's going to be us. It's yeah, not yeah. going to be anything. It's not going to be, be anyone else. No. no. And it's the thing where it's like, should we just be running off to other planets once we just use up our planet? I believe we should try to heal our planet. Absolutely. And then continue. I mean, we yeah, shouldn't just give on. up on her. No. I think five hundred, six hundred years down the road, we should populate Mars. Uh, yeah. The moon. I don't want to. You know. But. A very good line in it that I totally skipped over is Brad Pitt because the inner monologue it, it is very good because at one point he goes we're we are world eaters he's like we'll move from planet to planet and I don't mm-hmm. want that's not the vision I want that's not my future. I don't want that's all. not the future I want for mankind we just either. that that just makes you Independence Day aliens you're locusts exactly <laughs> yeah you're not I which think which is the very thing that we fear yeah exactly is yeah. is what we become so yeah, just it's... jumping planet to planet. Uh, ruining every planet in our wake it's not something that i but i think at one point we're gonna have to either make the decision we either gotta stick i think i think 200 years down the road it'll be a real question yeah and we either gotta go for it and because i mean you're really gambling it all on mars if you're gonna go for it right (laughs) but uh, yeah i think clean up this bad boy first (laughs) then let's head out move on yeah (laughs) Let's focus how to actually run a successful planet before, before we, we start and... opening up new planets. <laughs> it's like opening up a business. Yeah, and having it's not no making idea. Money yet, and but that then business, opening another one. And that business fails. Yeah. You, that business fails, you're horrible at it. But then you're like, I'm just going to re- redo. Let's yeah. have a redo. It's the Trump method of it's, business. It's, it's, you know, it's <laughs> Trump a, it's vodka. A very... <laughs> let's just keep opening new businesses. Trump steaks. Let's go. Let's keep Trump doing airline. It. We'll just keep rolling with it. As long as we put the name on, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> but yeah, I I loved him. I actually love this movie. Yeah, let's was, let's get to the uh, our uh, our uh, it was, rating of this. Yeah, it was just uh, I don't know. I I, I loved it. I, I just got the it to me. I felt what the the filmmakers wanted me to feel. Totally. From it. I was I felt uh, and it was so clear and cut to me yeah, too. It was sad. Yeah. It was it was deep. Again, those philosophical questions. I think. I think this is one 20 years from now people are going to go back and have all kinds of theories and whatnot yeah. like they do for – I'm not comparing it to 2001 Space Odyssey. But like like the way people do 2001 Space Odyssey where they go back and it, it, having it so many different meanings and whatnot. Right. Look at Brad Pitt though. He looks great. He's, he's in his 50s. He looks, <laughs> he just looks incredible. And look what the rating got man. on IMDb. Which is point one higher than, than Rambo. Rambo Last Blood. It's at 7.1 right now with 21,317 reviews. 
Yeah. But you, you know, you know what, Cash? I think with this film, because let, let's be honest here. This, this movie is about what? Two hours and four minutes, two hours and five minutes, two hours and three minutes. Okay. And this was a very slow burn. This was not a movie. This was not a science fiction movie that had a nope. lot of, at, or not science fiction, sci-fi. Right? In my, it was all about, of, it was all about the journey. Exactly. It wasn't about the destination because I think I think that even might have disappointed some people. I think it's all about getting there. But to me, and that's why I think this has got a bad review on IMDb. But I love and it. And it doesn't movie. have a good user review on Rotten Tomatoes. It has like a fifty. See, yeah, people. Uh, I don't. I know the more I the more I see this and the more movies I review, the more I, the less I think I know about people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because Rambo got 85 and then this one gets a 50. Yeah. And this was a brilliant movie. And I if, really, fu- I fucking love it. And if you're going to go see this film, go see it on the biggest possible GXL, screen. GXL. Get yourself a 90. IMAX. Because mm-hmm. this film is so beautiful. You want to see it. I mean, it's like. I'm going to go see it again for sure. Absolutely. Because this, this is one of those films I felt it was kind of like an event. It was. Going into space, I feel like, you know, it's, yeah, I'm going to go see it again for sure. So uh, what was your what was your rating? What's your review, Cash? I am going to give it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I say, I mean, amazing. <laughs> I thought it was really, really good. The acting was amazing. Yes. But uh, the story was good. The science maybe was shaky at some points, but uh, I gave it a B, a solid B. Solid B, huh? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, like, this, this is right up my alley for everything. You know I love dra- drama. Oh, I yeah. love drama films. They're my favorite. I love stories that will just take you on a journey. Rather, as you just said, rather than the destination, it's more about mm-hmm. the journey. I love scenes where it's dialogue and it's very, I love slow burns, but I love the dialogue driven films that really tell a good story where we oh, yeah. understand each and every character. When every word means something. Exactly. And that, that's what I thought they did very, very well. Yes, it is a very slow paced movie. There's not a lot of action that takes place, but if you pay attention to the storyline, you pay attention to the dialogue, it's a brilliant film. Yeah. And the acting is, is awesome. Brad Pitt, as we talked about earlier, should be nominated for some sort of an award. Oh, absolutely. I really yeah. believe this is one of his best performances in a long time that I've seen him. And he's a great actor, might I, mind you. Oh, I'm not yeah. saying he's bad by any means. He's one of the best. But this is just such an awesome performance by Brad Pitt. It is. And it's such a grim, grim movie. It is. I mean, you don't, you go into it not thinking, but it is grim up. And it's even grim to the very end, but you kind of leave. Uh, happy in a sense yes. you know you in a weird way it yeah, is it very is. but you said because I, mean, I mean at the very end you kind of because you feel for brad and brad at the very end because brad is i mean his character in the entire movie is just the least happiest person mm-hmm. you'll ever meet man this guy's a fucking bummer he's a bummer. but at the very very end you get that maybe this guy's not such a fucking buzzkill yeah, and maybe and you, you can just find get a little find happiness that it took him going to all the way to fucking neptune <laughs> To figure out, and that is the true character's <laughs> journey. That is the true character. That is journey. character building at its Absolutely. finest, my friend. That is a journey you can track from start to finish. Yeah. And and to to con- continue on, like I I thought visually this movie looked so great. The the moon scenes, as we talked about, awesome. I the predict- rover scenes. It's got. I'm right now. This is my. Uh, it's right up there. It might be my win for best cinematography. I would say so. As of I don't right know now. what I don't know just off the top of my head what would beat it right off the bat. Well, uh Midsummer was very beautifully shot. That's true. That was a very good one. Yeah, in all the yeah, twists. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah, cinematography. Yeah. Yeah. That's another really good one. That's a really good cinematography. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, right now I can't think of anything else that uh that looked as good shot on film as this one did. Yeah. And this was shot in film. It was. It wasn't digital. So for me to, to wrap this all up, uh, I actually, I'm, I'm much higher on this film. I, I just, I loved it all around. I gave this a solid A minus. Wow. That's like, I really did. Going out of this, I wasn't sure how much you were going to, uh, well, I knew, I knew you were going to like the actor and you were going to like the drama, but, uh, because, and 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 seeing from, uh, from the views, I, I was worried. I was yeah. worried that maybe you may love because everyone else seemed to not enjoy. It very I don't much. know why. I sat there, well in 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 Mary, my girlfriend. She didn't. She was like, yeah, I didn't really like it. She fell asleep a couple times, and I'm like, how did you not really? like this? I love. And this And for movie. me, it was the for me when I went to theater, it was like that perfect atmosphere where it was dead silent, but it wasn't silence like I have boredom. It was yeah. silence like, oh, we all got to take this in and mm-hmm. whatnot. It was that perfect like you could hear a pin drop, even those space scenes or whatever. It just got like dead. It's my favorite kind of atmosphere. There was a guy who brought chips and right next to us no 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 hear me out, hear me out. it's something. a good story no it's oh a good story. really the movie was so tense and quiet yeah he ate his chips 
I mean, this was the most respectable man I've ever came across in a theater. I'm when glad I saw, people can read that, read right. the room and figure that out. And he did. And he had Fritos and a big bag. And I, I couldn't even hear him chew or anything. Like, he awesome. was very respectable. But that, I think it goes to show you like how intense this movie was as yeah. a whole, where even him knowing, having some respectability, he was like, oh, I need to be quiet. Yeah, and the fact that he and brought chips we... in anyways. Right. So this guy must be thinking, I'm going to chomp down yep. on these bags. But yeah, like you said, that's how my, that's how the tension was. It was just cold and silent. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, everyone was kind of uh, taken back by it. And I was so glad that they didn't go over the top of the score either. Because sometimes... I love no. music and I love scoring films. This but is I, less is more in this one. Exactly. But there are times like like in Rambo where they had the music so dramatic that I was like, we stop, <laughs> stop. I don't need to. When I notice the music, that's a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? During dialogue. But this was so quiet. And you know, I think, I think in a lot of ways the writers did that because space is quiet. Exactly. That's what I was saying. So it's you have got to know your environment. And for exactly. me, space, to me, when I think space, and I think score, I think of single chords. Yep. Think of real light, kind of tense, but real simple, you know, yep. not not orchestras no, or we don't anything. Need any of that. Not the if it's a space adventure like Star Wars, yeah. completely different. Dual fates, build that build shit that up. Shit up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But, but I don't need like the this. dual fates, the ha ha when he's yeah. like floating yeah. and it's like it feels like it's the end of the world and I don't need the I don't need a full <laughs> fucking orchestra. No. I just need I, that that that's it because it adds because scores should just add to that the theme and whatnot, but mm -hmm. we don't need to get too into it. Yeah. So, uh, that is our review for Ad Astra, uh, overall consensus of this podcast between you and I, Loved we it. love this film. Absolutely. It was really great. We highly recommend it to, to everyone, anyone who's interested in drama, sci-fi, uh, type of film. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, be sure to like this video, uh, comment below. What did you think of Ad Astra and Brad Pitt's performance? Uh, you can uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well and hit the little bell notification. We post five days a week on our YouTube channel. We have movie reviews, movie news, uh, TV Tuesdays. We've got trailer reactions. We are all on board uh, for this podcast. You can find it in audio format, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Uh, we have social media pages, Twitter, seen it podcast cash is on Twitter. That's just cash Instagram. Have you seen it? Facebook. Have you seen it? Podcast. My name is Mason Knight. That is cash Krause. And until next time. Bye.